Hey folks, welcome back to Resource Real Talk about real estate. I'm Jay Pitts, broker owner at Remax Premier Properties. I'm joined today by Luke Andrews, an agent here as well. Luke, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Jay. Awesome. So remember, we want to be your resource for everything real estate related, and I am super excited about today's topic. Today we're going to discuss something that is near and dear to both of our hearts, yep. and that's real estate investing. So you know, we work with a lot of real estate investors, and Luke, I know you do as well. So why don't you tell our viewers out there, what are some of the things that you think the investor looking to kind of get into the space should really get taken care of before they get started? Absolutely, Jay. And that's probably the number one question I get is, what do I need to do to get started in real estate investing? Um, you know, number one, you want to make sure that you've got an ROI uh, set up for your money. Decide what it's going to take, uh, what type of return that you're going to need in order to start real estate investing. Sure. You know, number two, consult a real estate professional. You want to make sure that you've got somebody that you know and trust that does this on a regular basis, um, who can not only help you navigate the waters, um, but who can also help you find deals both on and off the market. Because as you know, the best deals are usually found off market. You know, you want to talk to a property manager. You know, I know for myself and a lot of people that I work with, they don't want to be the ones who go and fix a toilet in the middle of the night or yeah. go chase down rent or find new tenants. Um, so consult a property manager. And then you also want to talk to a couple of financial people as well. You know, I, I always recommend one talking to a lender to see what it's going to take to get financed and get qualified for buying an investment property. And then also consult your tax professional. Um, there's a lot of really great tax incentives for real estate investing, but you want to make sure that you're staying well within the government guidelines. So consult that tax professional. One thing that stuck out to me that you really, really said, and I think it's extremely important for investors to know, is where are they going to land before they even get started? And that ROI calculation, I think huge. people get a little bit intimidated by the numbers. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like for you in your process? Well, and actually, Jay, if you don't mind, maybe I'll walk you through a deal that I'm currently Please. working, and then we'll Please. see what makes sense. Um, so right now, I'm looking at purchasing a property for $50,000. And for that $50,000 property, um, I'm expecting $750 per month in rent. Wow. So I know with that particular property um, that I'm going to have a monthly mortgage payment that's principal, interest, taxes, and insurance of right around $300. Okay. Um, and that's, that's a 30-year mortgage there. Okay. Um, in addition, um, you know, I'm like a lot of you, I don't want to have to go fix the toilet in the middle of the night. I don't want to have to go chase rent. So I, sure. I have a property manager. Of course. Um, for that, I pay, it's roughly 10% of the monthly rent that comes in. So there's a $75 monthly expense that I have. Okay. I also hold back 10% each month for what I call lost vacancy. Okay. Um, in case I have a month where I don't have a tenant, somebody moves out unexpectedly, or sure. you know, I've got a, a toilet that breaks and I need to replace it. Um, so there's another $75 there. Um, okay. So with that, that's going to leave me roughly $300 per month in positive cash flow. Now, for that $300 per month, if you annualize that over 12 months, you're looking at $3,600 coming back to you for the year. Now, what does it cost to get into a property like this? Um, so one, you're gonna need to have 20% to put down. So that's gonna be $10,000 there. Okay. And then in addition, I usually count on about $2,000 for closing costs on a property this size. So if you look there, there's a $12,000 um, entry cost, if you will. Um, so with that, if you take the $3,600 return and divide that by the $12,000 entry cost, that's going to be right at a 30% ROI. Now, wow. I, I don't know about you, but I haven't been able to get that back in the stock market. No, I so. certainly can't get it from my bank, whether it be a CD and definitely not a savings account. Sure. Um, not to mention all the great tax incentives that I get for right. this. Um, and with something like that, I mean, my mortgage or my initial investment is paid back within two and a half years. Very, very powerful stuff, Luke. And, and so maybe speak to this too. Are there really $50,000 turnkey investments that rent for seven fifty dollars a month out there? And do you have access to those? There are a great deal of them out there. And yes, we have access, both on market and off market. Um, this is actually an on market deal that I was able to come across and find. One thing they may be worried about though, Luke, what happens if they start down this path 
and the bottom falls out of the market? Again, an excellent question. And that's something that I get from a lot of clients as well is what happens if we have another 2009? Well, you know, for me, if the bottom were to drop out again, right. I mean, uh -huh. knock on wood, we don't anticipate that happening, but let's say that it did. For me, it is a full circle supply and demand situation. Um, yeah. You know, one, if we have a lot of foreclosures that are out there, it means that the market is now flooded with people who can't purchase a home That's and so true. who are forced to rent. Um, but in addition to having more renters that are out there, there's also a lot more inventory because there's these distressed and foreclosed properties that are out there. As long as I've done well by my investments, I haven't over leveraged myself. I've got a lot of equity there that I can pull from that I can go buy more and more of these properties sure. while prices are low. You know, who doesn't love shopping when everything's on sale? You know, you're absolutely right, Luke. That's really interesting to, to think about the fact that when sales prices go down, rent prices go up. And I, I right. think that may not be something that our, our, our listeners or our viewers think about. You know, folks, I really appreciate you joining us today. This is the kind of stuff that we're about here at Resource. Again, we wanna be that resource for everything real estate related, you know, buying or selling residential property or even investing. So wherever you're watching this, feel free to reach out to us. There'll be ways to get a hold of us via social or our website. And once again, just thank you so much for joining us here at Resource, Real Talk About Real Estate. Thanks, Luke. Thank you.